It was a hot September morning in 1978 when I waltzed into the Jamaica School of Art, which is in Kingston, Jamaica. The Cultural Training Center, CTC, housed the Jamaica Schools of Art, Dance, Drama, and Music. The CTC was later renamed the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts. If you could look inside my head, you would see me twirling, skipping, and prancing about with joy and excitement. Mathematics, science, and all the other subjects that I struggled with were now behind me. I was ready to soar, and soar I did until I came up against a particular lecturer. She tagged aggressively against my wings and brought me back down to earth. I remember my first critique. How could someone who have given me such beautiful pieces like these then turn around and give me this piece of shit? She asked. Not once did I get such cutting comment from my high school mathematics or science teacher. I grew to appreciate that comment as it prepared me for later years when I bit off a bit more than I could chew and wished that I had passed up certain projects. This is my studio in the Manchester Hills where I live. Unfortunately, it's not seeing much action at the moment. As you can see, things are just laid around. Uh, there are broken pieces which I keep because sometimes you're making a, like a compilation of different pieces and just creatively you put something. It might not go on the market, it might not go in a studio, it might not go in an exhibition, but I will put it up in my, in my yard, you know, and um, you will see what I mean later. I appreciate and love everything that I do in terms of art. And even if it's not very great, but it's part of my development, and you know, I just love that. This piece, for instance, it is called Mother's Pain. You could see that it's been left outdoors for years. I will still take it in. I will clean it up at some point and I'll take it back inside, but I'll make sure that all the natural um, decoration that nature has put on it will still be there. I love that. If you look at these pictures, you could see that it's been left out there and the plant has grown over it. The vines have wrapped around it. I completed three of the four years at NML College and continued at the University of the Arts in London, where I did a further two years. I chose to specialize in ceramic design because of its versatility. Visit a large home store and you will see various ceramic dinnerware sets, vases, interior and exterior tiles, table and floor lamps, wall lights, figurines, murals, and large decorative clay pots and sculptures. Ceramic surfaces utilize beautiful, vibrant, glazed, painted, and screen printed colors and flat and carved designs. Construction methods in clay include throwing on the potter's wheel, making slabs, coils, pinching, and slip casting. The sciences of creating clay bodies, glazes, underglaze, and unglazed colors 
are fascinating. Firing clay product products is another area. Different clays and glazes mature at different temperature. They are fired at different temperatures. You have earthenware, stoneware, porcelain, and raku. I was mesmerized by the possibilities and have developed great respect for the processes involved. The processes in constructing, decorating, and firing clay is very delicate. You can put your all in a piece, and when you open the kiln, it is smashed to pieces on the kiln floor. On the other hand, you can open the kiln, and, when, and what you see, the way the colors mix and their brilliance is simply breathtaking. Over the years, I have evolved and haven't done much ceramics over the past five years because of traveling. But I am happy that I stuck with it and no other art form has given me the joy and satisfaction that I have enjoyed working in clay. During my second year at the Jamaica School of Art, in 1980, I chose sculpture as one of my four areas to experience. One of the pieces I did was the relief wood carving on this page. I was concerned about the measures Jamaica had to enforce on the population in order to satisfy the IMF loan repayment. This piece is called IMF Strangulation. These are my shell lights. The idea for these lights came from the conch shell. The technique is slip casting another technique in ceramics. And this technique is used for making dinnerwares, teapots, etc. My first love in art was drawing and painting. Creating fairly accurate contour drawings from observation was a natural skill that I possessed from an early age. In other words, if I was drawing a human head using a pencil, I would draw the outline of the head and the edges of the eyes, nose, mouth, and hairline, and the drawing would be quite accurate. I enjoyed drawing people doing different activities, as well as drawing trees, mountains, and animals. During my teenage years, I became very good at shading under the tutelage of my high school art teacher, the late Mr. Stanley Barnes. Mr. Barnes worked in a cubist style, dividing the parts of the subject into geometrical shapes. And when using pencils, his tones and values were smooth and precise, and his edges were sharp. He was the inspiration that motivated me to select visual arts as my vocation. As a portrait artist, my favorite mediums are pencils and color pencils. I love to create tints, shades, and values, and putting them together to produce a finished portrait. While observing the sitter before starting a portrait, I look at the posture, expression, and emotion, as well as the position of the head. In my portrait of the athlete Usain Bolt, I wanted to capture his determination and strength of character. 
I painstakingly searched the print media for a photograph where his expression of ecstasy told a story of triumph after the great sacrifice, hard work, and discipline that went into the years leading up to that moment. When he lit the Beijing bird's nest in 9.69 seconds in 2008 to become the fastest human being ever, Usain Bolt dancing the gully creeper afterwards struck up a euphoria that swept through the stadium. My self-portrait done in 2011 projects a reflective mood. The vigorous diagonal dashes with the pencil show my confidence with that medium. Innocence is the title I give to the portrait of the little girl. Innocence, fragility and vulnerability with large eyes soaking up the uncensored outside world. Our children need love, care, and nurturing to grow into balanced and responsible citizens. Our ladies are leading the way in academia, and I did the graduate to celebrate our women. The great majority of students at university level are females. I recognize the males in the Caribbean who are forging ahead, but in my role as an educator, I admire females for their hard work and achievements.
That was my puppy, Panta. Yes, the mixture with Rottweiler, German Shepherd, and Mongrel. All right. Thank you for watching Dancing with the Heart Part 2. And um, look out for Part 3. Thank you very much. Okay. Blessings. Have a great day.